We're still only four months in with these new monthly video essays I've been uploading, and I once again can't thank you enough for how much these have been taking off in not only views and subscriber count, but with how positive the comments have been as well. Meaning that the plan for these video essays is working, and honestly, it's working quicker than expected. Thank you again. But with that being asked, what even is that plan? Why do I make these video essays? The whole entire goal is to not only change the perspective of media and to start looking at the world and other people in a more positive manner, but also because, honestly, there's something about saying thank you to other people and businesses for how they've changed my life for the better. It feels good to get others out there and to return the favor of how much they've made my life worthwhile. But if you've been following along with these monthly video essays, you'll notice that all of these have been going over people or things that have made my life better recently. Like, 2022 through 2024 recently. But in this video, we're gonna go all the way back to 2018, when I was much younger and honestly, when life was easier. But also, the start of what has been an epic journey that's still going on to this day, that franchise guy. The build up to running into that franchise guy is a fun one, but how exactly did it all start? Well, we're gonna go just a little further back actually than 2018, and talk about how my life was late 2016. It was the start of my senior year in high school, and long story short, it was safe to say my number one passion was football. What did I want to be when I grew up at age 17 through 18? It was simple. Broadcast football. My long-term goal was to be an NFL commentator because, hey, why not? I'm young and ambitious. But getting to that level of NFL commentating is no easy task. So, I decided that maybe I should start a little smaller. I think, hey, I'm a diehard Atlanta Falcons fan, maybe I should start a podcast or a YouTube channel going over my thoughts on what the team should do. I know the Falcons and the NFL as much as the next guy, I know all the names of the league and how to manage cap space, I got this. And this dream of being an NFL commentator was probably the easiest path I've ever gone down. Until it was time to start taking action. In 2018, I do eventually think of a name and schedule for my small Falcons YouTube channel named Rise Up Rundown, but I didn't actually take action and upload an episode till a year later because the truth was, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, maybe I sorta don't know how the team can handle their cap situation. I sorta don't know a good pass rusher they could get that isn't as big of a name as Aaron Donald. I sort of don't know literally anyone coming up in the NFL draft. I was quick to realize that I don't know the NFL as much as I thought. I'm going to need some help understanding the league and the game more. And within basically a miracle, my brother one day walks into my room and introduces me to someone. Marcus Whitman, aka That Franchise Guy. If you're trying to understand the league a little better and start an NFL podcast like I was, I truly believe Marcus's channel is one of, if not the, best place to start. For one thing, his knowledge of the game is insane. He's called some of the most insane, unpredictable outcomes in recent years. He believed in the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles to win the Super Bowl. He picked the 2018 Jacksonville Jaguars to disappoint, and probably his best take summed up in his best video essay ever, how the Vic Fangio style defense is no longer working in today's NFL. But it's not just that I think he knows the game well, I also feel his content was designed to help you understand the league more. He puts together a very simple schedule. January through April is mostly mock drafts meaning he puts together a series of videos going over what he'd do if he was the general manager of each NFL team and who he'd select in the NFL draft. Specifically, drafts 1 through 3, mostly, I would say. And once the draft is over, he spends time going over each team's draft and all the players they selected and if he thinks this was a smart decision by the team's front office. During the spring and summer, he starts his NFL deep dive series as he spends around a whole entire hour discussing each individual NFL team, their coaching staff and players, their overall outlook for the upcoming season, and how he thinks they'll perform. And of course, during the fall and winter, he gives out his own NFL power rankings, which is pretty straightforward. 
he spends around 35 to 40 minutes ranking each team during the season and going over if things look good or bad for the organization moving forward. He also gives up pretty interesting video essays from time to time, like on how he was higher on Anthony Richardson, or some this year that includes how he feels about Caleb Williams and Drake May. He gives up fun predictions videos as well, like his full NFL season's predictions before week one rolls around. Before the playoffs roll around, he'll give out his full playoff predictions. Which, by the way, a lot of those takes did age well. If you just want to hear more of his NFL thoughts and content for more than just 40 minutes to an hour on his YouTube channel, you're in luck, because he has more NFL content outside of his YouTube channel. He even has a podcast named The Fully Inflated Football Podcast. I'd say he usually goes over each NFL game weekly on there, describing how each team performed and what to expect moving forward, but sometimes he has a just for fun topic. Like, before Christmas rolled around last year, he had a what he'd give each team for Christmas. He gave the Packers a new defensive coordinator for Christmas, and good job, they actually did get a new defensive coordinator. There's plenty more to go over. I didn't even go over how fun his live streams can be during draft night, but you get the idea. In my opinion, he knows the league well and creates simple yet helpful NFL content that can truly help you go far in NFL content creation. It helped me clearly. Eventually, I did end up starting the Small Falcons YouTube channel, Rise Up Rundown. I did what I learned. Stick to a simple schedule, study the sport before you go out posting your opinion, and just make it fun. Post similar content, but don't copy. Like, I'll make a mock draft, but not nearly as many as Marcus does. I more just wanted to post every Tuesday and Friday, going over basically whatever was trending for the Falcons, and again, make it fun and simple. For what it's worth, it seemed to have worked. The channel in its first year gained 1,000 subs, and the videos averaged 1,000 views, which is an insane start. It was a really fun experience for me, Yet, it also taught me at a young age on how to handle a business of some sort. I wasn't making too much money from it, and it wasn't the biggest channel ever, but hey, it's still business practice for me nonetheless. However, as time goes by and I learn different things, my dreams and aspirations change. Explaining how my dream came from being a sports commentator to now wanting to be in the entertainment industry is a whole different topic, and would take too much time to explain in this video anyway. Despite my dreams and goals changing, that didn't mean that I didn't like NFL anymore. I still love tuning in every Sunday to watch the Falcons play. But, would I say that just making content talking about the Atlanta Falcons was my all-time biggest passion like it was back in the day? Honestly, not really. But yet, yeah, I did still want to keep content going over the Atlanta Falcons in some sort. But how? Well, my brother comes in and introduces me with yet another miracle at the right time. This time, with Tom Grossi. Now, Tom Grossi will still make quality content discussing the NFL, mostly the Green Bay Packers. It's kind of similar to what that franchise guy does, where he goes over his outlook of the team and how they'll perform moving forward. He'll predict the playoffs and Super Bowl and whatnot. But if you're not familiar with Tom Grossi... Would you be interested in watching his content if I told you he's a comedian? We've lost four straight, and Tua is in concussion protocol again. <laughs> I have to give him credit. Producing comedic content has got to be one of the hardest things to do. It's very pressuring, but I'd say he nails it. You can even tell through his comedy that he knows the league well. He'll mention things that only one NFL fan base would get, and I appreciate that, because it shows he's listening and watching closely to the league. For example, and no offense, but he even joked about how bad the commentating was for the 2023 Falcons vs. Titans game. Not many people were probably aware of how, you know, poor that commentating was, but Tom watched the game clearly and cracked a joke about that. He's basically trying to relate with every NFL fan base in a way. He'll joke around, yet be somewhat realistic on how each NFL fan base reacted during the season, or how a fan base reacts when a coach has been hired or fired, how a fan base reacts when a star player has been traded away or to their team. He'll joke around about the ever-so-going conspiracy about the NFL being scripted. You name it. And the best part? 
He's incredibly consistent. There's something new he uploads almost every day. The part that just wows me is how quick he is to upload. It's like, as soon as the news comes in that Jim Harbaugh has been hired by the Chargers, boom, he makes a comedic skit going over how Chargers fans feel about the hire. As soon as the NFL season is over for the Lions, boom, a comedic skit going over how Lions fans felt before the season, during the season week by week, all the way to the playoffs. As soon as Arthur Smith has been fired by the Atlanta Falcons, boom, a comedic skit going over how Falcons fans probably feel about that. And what's also impressive is how he'll usually add in how other teams feel about it as well for a split second. Maybe he'll joke around about how the rest of the AFC West is actually pretty scared about the Chargers' new head coach hire, or how the rest of the NFC South is pretty sad they can't make fun of the Falcons for Arthur Smith. He'll upload his content even if the news hits at like midnight. I'm telling you, he's just as quick to upload content as quick as Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter are to report NFL news. It's insane. It's like his alarm clock is when NFL news hits. So, seeing an NFL comedian made me wonder, huh, if I want to keep my Falcons content going, but maybe not in the way it used to be, why not try comedy? Now, I'm not as consistent as Tom is, and hell, probably not as funny, but for what it's worth, it seems to be working. I've recently been putting together short comedic Falcon skits that seem to be getting a decent amount of views and support. And what mostly matters is, I do think it's something I like to do. I like to be creative with whatever I upload, and honestly, it's fun to use my creativity into a pretty serious matter for the Falcons. Like, I think it's fun to just imagine how I think Arthur Blank hired new Falcons head coach Raheem Morris and offensive coordinator Zach Robinson and whatnot. Do I want to be an NFL content creator for the rest of my life? Only time will tell, but honestly, probably not. I'm more trying to get my stop motion animations out there with my brother, and get my own fictional characters into the real world. And of course, you can check out all we have to offer in the description below, and it means the world to us if you checked it out and let us know what you think. But of course, getting yourself out there into the entertainment world is no easy feat, so why not just take this time to get yourself out there and improve, yet also have fun with your creativity, with another side passion in NFL football. Now, I'll try not to prolong this video essay, even though there's other stuff I'd love to mention. I didn't mention how these two content creators have certainly developed very well over the years. You have that franchise guy collaborating with other big-time NFL content creators and even former NFL general managers, and Tom Grossi's huge 30 and 30 accomplishment for donating to St. Jude and ending up live with Pat McAfee and NFL Total Access, all they're doing is proving that dreams do come true. Their solution? It seems like it's just do what you love, stick to a simple schedule, and have fun. They're also very friendly to their fan base, which I appreciate. So, I guess to conclude this video essay, I just wanted to say thank you that franchise guy and Tom Grossi, your work inspires me to be better, and I'm rooting for you two to continue growing your reputation into the NFL world. Who knows what other cool events hold in store for you two, but whatever it may be, I'm sure it won't be a surprise to me. Two hardworking NFL content creators deserve what amazing events are coming.